Welcome to the following video, in which we would like to show you a few hydraulic disturbances that are so typical in canals. We will start with disturbances caused by the sensors themselves. In the video, you can now see our mini sensor at a water level of approximately 8 cm with a slight slope. There are no effects at all. The water surface is a bit wavy, but that is not caused by the sensor. It is simply due to the test channel. At the top right, you can now see a top view of the situation. We will now see this more often in the video, so that you can also see the influence. Here, you can now see that we have changed the slope. The flow rate has remained the same, and you can see the effects caused by the sensor itself. You can see that the water level rises at the front of the sensor and falls off again towards the back. This is a typical disturbance caused by the sensor body. Measurement failures can also occur here, which our device technology can then eliminate by being adjusted accordingly. We have now changed the sensor for our POA sensor, which normally works up to 1 meter water level. As expected, you can now see significantly increased effects because the body is larger. What you can clearly see here at the end of the sensor is that the cable is almost dry. The water level rises at the front due to the body of the sensor, falls off at the back and virtually forms a depression. In this depression, there is then also a hydrostatic pressure measurement, which of course can no longer function properly, because the water level no longer corresponds to the standard. We have now changed the slope, and can see right away that the water level rises automatically. The whole situation becomes calmer, and due to these changed hydraulic conditions, this sensor body now has virtually no effect at all analogous to the first sequence we saw with the mini sensor. This means that from this water level or this hydraulic constellation onwards, measurement is possible again without any problems. Here we show a very typical situation. We have installed a step or a rise of about 1.5 cm in the sewer which is supposed to represent a transition from the pipe into a shaft, and at the same time a step downwards, as can also occur at any time in a shaft structure. The incoming pipe virtually falls into the shaft. You can see the rise of the water level at the beginning of this slab. At the end, and already before the end, you can see from the falling water surface, which is caused as an Venturi effect, that a flow change takes place there. Here we have now changed the slope a bit, and we have reduced the flow rate. You can clearly see here the slight rise at the beginning, and towards the end the water level becomes lower and lower. This lowering of the water level actually starts quite early, and has disadvantages when measuring with our velocity sensor. Now we have placed a velocity sensor, and here you can see what I was talking about before. You can see this slanted water level. The sensor has a hydrostatic pressure measurement at the end of the sensor body, which measures a completely different water level than actually exists in front of the sensor, where the velocity is measured. Measurement errors are predictable here. We have now changed the slope once again. You can now see on the right hand side how impounding forms, which then falls off again towards the back. That means we have an acceleration after this step, which goes completely across this slab. Another noticeable point is that this acceleration now takes place in a sloped area that is more or less a backwater section, as you can see on the left side. 
This backwater can actually be seen as a wave formation up to the velocity sensor at the end of the canal, as you can see here in the top right picture. The effects are clearly visible. Now, if you look at the picture at the top right, you can see this wave by the fact that it seems to be narrower at the right edge of the picture than on the left side. These effects are indeed only caused by a threshold that is one and a half centimeters high. Here is another typical disturbance, a lateral offset. This can be laterally offset pipe segments or anything else that protrudes into the canal. You can see these effects propagating in the canal like a serpentine movement going through the canal. This serpentine, of course, does not stop after five times the width of the canal or similar distances, but continues through the entire length of a canal to the end. We present here different situations with a greater slope, as you can see here now. Here we have a very high energy, which is why the serpentine can then only be seen to some extent. You can see water flowing sideways at the top right of the picture, where you can see at the sensor at the end of the canal that the water runs across at an angle at some times. Here we have changed the slope again. We have relatively little water in the canal. You can see how the water sloshes through the canal in steep curves from right to left. By the sensor at the top, you can also see how the serpentine is moving over the sensor. Another disturbance. A stone simply placed in the middle of the canal, and the effects then partly in front of this stone, but mainly downstream of the stone. You can see a small diamond formation, which then moves away from the stone to the sensor at the back of the canal. You can clearly see it here. The diamond runs through, and in the background you can also see the velocity sensor, over which this diamond then passes. This can also lead to minor measurement errors here. Here we now have the situation that the oncoming flow at the stone is fast, but the following slope is not very steep. Therefore, the water dams up and a wave-like movement is created. This wave-like movement can then also be seen clearly at the back of the sensor, which of course also leads to measurement errors. Here again, a slightly higher flow velocity with a higher water level. The stone, of course, is still noticeable within its flow, but no longer as it was at a lower water level. This can be seen very well in the top right picture, how the diamond now forms on the right and left.